Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I think the video title is pretty self-explanatory. What would you carry in a missing person, a search and rescue type of situation? The reason this came up is my dad and I recently went and volunteered, helped in a small search. Well, it wasn't a small search and rescue. There was quite a few individuals there. An elderly individual living in our area about two weeks ago went missing on a Friday evening and they still could not locate the individual come Sunday. The afternoon on Sunday, I was looking at Facebook. They had put out some information saying they were looking for more volunteers to regain the search effort or restart the search effort on Sunday morning. So I had talked to my dad. I said, let's, uh, I'm going to go. Do you, would, would you want to go? This is all per happening pretty close to the area both him and I live. And, you know, if it was my family member, I would have wanted people to come out and help. We live in a great community. There was a little over, I think it was 300 individuals showed up to help and volunteer uh, to look for the individual. So I had never really been involved in one before. I, well, not like this, not knowing what you were getting into. I was involved in one other. I can share that on another video because it's a long story and I'm not trying to take away from the topic of this video. So this individual that was missing, I would think most people were speculating worst case scenario. That seemed to be kind of the general vibe, um, at least you know, mostly from the first responders. So anyway, I threw some things into a pack. Um, some things I was glad that I had, and you know, in the instance that we would have located the individual, I think a lot of this would have came in handy. There was also some things after thinking about it, uh, listening to some other individuals talk that I think could be better or you could throw into a pack like this. I carry a pack every day. Um, it has some of my work equipment in it. Um, it's got some extra clothing. Because I do construction, it's not that difficult to you know, get completely trashed or get some mud or something and have to change. Um, so I, I keep a variety of different things in there. I'm probably gonna new, do another video at some point discussing what I carry in my everyday bag. This is basically a condensed version of my everyday bag with a couple other things added in, but I pretty much took things out of that bag and put them straight into this bag. I was trying to cut down on weight. I didn't know how much ground we had to cover. So without spending too much of the video going into detail as far as what we were doing and, and that type of thing, I can go into more detail on another video. Um, some of the things that we took issue with with how things were gone about. But again, I'll, I'll save that for another video and I'll keep this to just pretty much what we packed, uh, what we used, and what I wish we would have taken. So to start off with, this is just a small uh, Gregory, I think it's a nan yeah, Nano 16 liter bag. It's pretty small. Uh, I picked it up a few years back for just really light hiking stuff. Um, mushroom hunting, just getting out in the woods, whether that, or uh, could be hiking around, you know, an urban setting, that type of thing. It's just super light. Um, I like the Gregory stuff. I have a Gregory, more of like a backpacking type of setup as well. So anyway, uh, that is what the bag is. Again, nothing fancy. Um, I did take a Baofang radio. I can talk about that a little bit more in a second. Obviously, some Nalgene water bottles. Let's see. So one item that I put in the bag and it came in handy right off the bat. If you're not, well, if you've never been involved in any type of a search effort, have some high visibility um, because if you're searching, the people on your search team need to be able to see you if something would happen to you, people need to be able to see and locate you. It was a great piece that I threw in here. 
this is something that I actually carry in my everyday bag. I actually have one in my truck as well because of doing construction. But I listened to an individual's channel talking about uh, having a form of a safety vest if you would wind up in some kind of a situation, let's say, where you didn't want to be mis id'd as hiding or a perpetrator or something like that or off the side of the road a reflective vest can come in useful in many many circumstances but i put it in there right off the bat i quickly realized i needed to have it on there was a lot of other people showing up volunteers that had all their hunting camouflage on uh fd you know or olive drab you know military color stuff to blend into the woods but we're going through people's backyards their outbuildings numerous things crossing different people's ground and you don't want to possibly be mistaken for someone who's out there um, looking for trouble so it's it's a great way to help identify yourself as as someone that you're not trying to portray and I'll leave it at that. I think it's pretty self-explanatory how useful that could be. So that was item number one that I was glad that I put in my pack. Uh, these are a small pair of waterproof pants. They're just a, a quick pullover, something to basically put on over top of your jeans or your um, cargos or whatever. This is a Carhartt uh, rain gear jacket. There was some rain off and on those two days. There was some in the forecast that day. Luckily, I didn't need to pull it out because these can get hot while you're hiking. Um, but like I said, it's just a standard, it's a pretty heavy duty uh, rain jacket. I believe this, I think, ended up running like $100, something like that. So it's it's a it's more than just your five or ten dollar rain gear it's it's pretty substantial you can be out in it i've i've been out in this at work um, for an entire day and you're not getting wet so again that is a good piece of gear to have uh, i always have some mechanics gloves in my bag i also packed a ifac or you know individual first aid kit this is a trauma kit I built this individual um, bag when I started thinking more about safety and having essentials on me for a variety of reasons. I can, I will, if anybody's interested, I will unpack this IFAC on another video. I don't think it's useful or helpful to unpack it on tonight's video just because it's a little bit more uh, specialized discussion and I just wanted to kind of go over the bag in general. But there's a lot of things in here that I've figured out are great to have. It's got kind of a boo-boo section for having kids. That's great to have on hand. I have some diabetic supplies in there for our other daughter. I have things in there for trauma, as I stated, which in working in construction, you know, and if you're a person who likes to conceal it's great to have for a variety of different reasons. Again, I can unpack this on another video. I will save it for that. Uh, I also had a flashlight, which also came in handy looking into some sheds and some other buildings. We came across some culvert pipes where it was good to have a light. I think that's pretty much it that I have in the, or had in the bag. And again, I can kind of discuss a couple of the things I set to the side. A Baofeng radio, for those of you who do not understand or don't know what one is, it's a handheld ham radio. I bought it a few years back when there was a lot of chaos going on. I think people could probably understand what I'm talking about or, or uh, decipher what I'm talking about. But it's also handy in my construction truck. I can pick up uh, dump truck drivers and their radio traffic and, and numerous things. You used to be able to pick up emergency medical services on these, I believe, but now most companies or counties, that's the word I was looking for, uh, as far as emergency medical services, police, fire, all that, have went to digital, I believe, 
is what they're on and it's also scrambled so even if you have a digital radio i believe their stations are scrambled you can't hear what's going on that was a bit of a different thing to me that they didn't have a more clear line of communication to the, the groups and the people that were in the woods again I can go into this a bit more detail on another video as far as my experience with this search effort. There was, uh, there was some goods that came out of it. There were some bads that came, or didn't bads that didn't come out of it. Things that I think could have been improved upon, or, or at least if in the future should be improved upon. So I think these are a great tool to have if for some reason this was the only form of communication some other individuals in your family you know had these if cell service was down for some reason or you didn't have one it is a great means of communication uh, to friends family whatever i think it's pretty self-explanatory on why it would be good to get a hold of people and they're pretty they come with a pretty good book as far as they're not too difficult to work uh, ham radios do transmit for a pretty decent distance especially the way that I understand it, if there's repeater towers and things to carry that signal even further, they can go a really long way. And it is not illegal to broadcast on one if it's an emergency situation. However, if you're gonna broadcast on a ham radio, my understanding, you're supposed to have a ham license. If you're interested, I would just dig into looking into it, but there's a lot of details around ham radio. Um, what else was I gonna discuss? I wanted to talk about the things that I thought would have been good to have had with us that I heard other people state and thought about while we were out walking or hiking. Flagging tape would have been a great thing to have if for some reason you would have to break away from the group. They obviously do not advise that, but being devil's advocate, if for some reason you would have to uh, veer off or you got uh, you know, lost and, the, and maybe the group broke away from you, you've got some flagging to kind of mark out where you are, where you've been. Uh, another good thing that they talked about flagging being good for is if you come across an article or something that you're looking for, if you're looking for someone, is you can use the flagging tape to mark out that area or to band a tree or whatever to kind of help indicate that there's an area of importance that they need to come back and uh, find that there may have been something left or dropped on the ground or a, a track or whatever it is. So I think flagging is a great thing to have. It's probably something that I'm going to incorporate into my everyday bag just for a variety of possible uses they to share a little bit of information as far as what we were doing they broke us off into teams they had us download a app called CalTopo, which is a topographical app that i guess emergency services use they are able to uh, manipulate and put in a, a grid and a location for where the individual went missing. So that's what we used for pretty much all of our location services as well as pinning anything anyone would find. Again, not to dive into too much detail on that, I'll share that in a separate video. So I did, you know, again, I did think it would have been a good idea to have had some flagging. And the other thing that I think would have been good, uh, good to have uh, just trying to recall everything off the top of my head was a compass and that's another good thing I think would be great to have in my everyday bag it's especially when we were using that app a compass would have been great just to be able to not be looking at a phone or refreshing a phone or um, trying to keep the screen on you could know you know whatever direction you started off heading and use that compass the rest of the way to because as you move through the woods it would help keep you more you know in the direction that you wanted to be headed um, but obviously i think it's pretty self-explanatory why a compass would be a good item to have there was one other thing i thought just popped into my head that i wanted to share but i can't think of it offhand so i think for 
most of what we were doing, this was a pretty adic adequate kit. Uh, I did also have a couple of granola bars, some things like that in there. Some information I came across and it's just food for thought. If you anticipate encountering someone that may have been lost or out in you know the woods or whatever for a length of time, not only is these, you know, or are, are these items, you know, thinking about yourself and what's possibly are you going to get into, but you may think about if you find someone uh, or some, maybe someone on your team was to get hurt or whatever the case was, it would be a good idea to have some extra provisions for another individual other than just yourself. So that was something else that I heard that I thought was good information. Uh, <laughs> I want to go into more detail about what we were involved in, but again, I think I'm going to save it for a later video. I also kind of want to share my everyday bag, like I was saying. But it was an interesting thing to be involved in. I, like I said, I learned a lot, and the the to I guess round out the entire story. They, if they, we did wind up finding the individual or the search, the, the search team as a whole, there was a group that it wound up finding the individual. So that was a great thing. He was alive. Um, he wasn't really injured from what they said. And, you know, he was back home, I think, within uh, spending the, the rest of the night at the hospital. He was back home the following day. So it had a good ending to the story. That was a great thing. And um, I was happy to be part of you know such a humbling event to see how many individuals from our community came out to help it makes you feel a lot better that if it was possibly your loved one or your child that your community is is willing to stand up and and help in a, something a situation like that to help find someone so that will do it for me on today's video. If there's something that you can think of that I missed, please feel free to uh, share it with us in the comments down below. Again, this video is just more me sharing what we were involved in. The things that, like I said, would have been nice to have had and what I ended up using. So hopefully you got something out of this video. We learned from it and you know, we always appreciate you all coming by, checking out the channel. If you like these videos, people say it on YouTube all the time. Leaving feedback, subscribing to the channel, liking the video, commenting, all those things help us out. So if you feel inclined, if you got something out of this, please drop us a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel, share the video, whatever it is that you feel like doing, it does help us out and benefit us as um, creators. So. We appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you, seeing you on the next video. Take care and have a good day.